Hey guys, what's going on? In today's video, I am incredibly excited because I'm going to be talking about a new boot maker, the first boot maker I've ever covered from Germany. I give you today custom craft boot makers. Let's open her up and let's start talking about them. All right, so first impressions, obviously these boot bags are probably some of the highest quality cotton twill boot bags I've ever seen. More on those in a moment. Yeah, these are super duper hardy. These boot bags are something that you'd make like a tarp out of, like like a tent to live in, you know, in the jungle or something like that. And on the boot bags um, is a piece of leather and on it it says, no fame, just rugged. And it is etched in there for Mario. And uh, I will mention another huge shout out and huge thank you to my friend Mario, otherwise known as Boot Reaper on Instagram, who arranged to have these sent to me to review for my channel. Thank you so much, Mario. Without you, I wouldn't have covered nearly as many brands as I have. On this boot bag, it says Custom Craft Handmade Number 21. That 21 actually signifies that these are the 21st pair of boots that Dennis has made. Dennis is the man behind the brand. He's a one-man shop in Germany. And I'll get more to him in a moment, but let me just give my first impressions on these boots. I would definitely, just at first glance, compare these to the likes of Nyx and Whites. These are gonna be overbuilt. We've got a super duper thick, hardy leather sole. And there's a really amazing embroidered wave patterning, it looks like, all along the stitching on the bottom, all along the welt stitch that you can see from the bottom of the sole. That's super unique. I've never seen that before. Typically, sometimes you see some cool, like, rolling here, but never this, this wave pattern, this embroidered type of pattern. Absolutely stunning. This leather is also absolutely stunning. It's from a tannery I've never heard of before called Kobel Leder, which uh, leather, Leder is German for leather. Kobel would be the name. So Kobel Tannery in Germany. They're obviously doing something really amazing because this is what's called Geschirr Leder, otherwise known as harness leather. It is super duper hardy. It is thick. It's got an amazing grain character to it. Really nice pull up, super firm temper. And typically on leathers like this, where the grain is super pronounced like on these typically the the temper is it's like a lower softer temper but these are not these are very hardy very sturdy boots and the leather is just gorgeous I, I don't have another word for it it's it almost has like a bison texture to it without being full-blown peaks and valleys bison it's, it's very pebbly I would describe this color as like a russet red a lot of a lot of rust rustic brownish reds coming through phenomenal on the color. I really, really like this color. And in fact, upon perusing Custom Crafts Instagram, he does a lot of red leathers, a lot of red tones, and I really like that. I've always been into red. You know, I'm super into the garnet shell that Grant Stone has been running lately. And uh, I've always been into red boots, russet type boots, russet being more of like the earthy brown red tone and that's the tonality that this definitely achieves really just a beautiful beautiful leather oh I'm, I'm just in utter awe I'm really glad I upgraded my iPhone so I could get footage of this in 4k because this deserves to be shot in 4k no doubt about it the heel so it's got a Vibram heel one two three four five six seven eight eight nails keeping the heel down the heel stack one two three four five thick layers of veg tan in the heel stack this uh Geschirr leather, otherwise known as harness leather, is five and three quarter ounces thick. That is thick stuff. Really, really robust. My favorite leather rawhide laces in these. These leather rawhides are just stunning. And then we've got a really nice sock liner and insole in there. These boots are partially lined. It's lined up in the vamp. It's not lined in the back heel stay, which is good. So you'll have more grip back there. And uh, on the inside it says number 21 and then the date, May 2023. Phenomenal. The tongue has an additional pad stitched on with custom craft leather on there. 
I'm just really in awe. These are just really, this is just one of just one of the most incredible builds I've ever seen. We've got an amazing roll top. How he managed to crimp this leather down at this thickness of five and a half ounces. Yeah, this, this leather unlined is five and a half ounces. So how he managed to crimp that down at this temper is beyond me. I mean, that would have taken some strength right there. Some some really skilled tooling work to be able to achieve this roll top because to, to cinch that down, that'd be basically like, think of like trying to cinching like a piece of paper down, that's easy. But when you combine like, I don't know, 20 pieces of paper, trying to cinch that down and form a good crease, it's very difficult. That's kind of what's going on here on this roll top. And then we've got a pretty standard back heel counter, back heel strip back here. The patterning is a standard service boot pattern in that the top panel of the throat and the eyelets intersect with the vamp very beautifully here. Triple stitched down, double stitched on the back heel counter. The most noteworthy thing to me about these boots is gonna be this crazy last. Now, first off, Mario has a very wide foot. I assume these are gonna fit him perfectly. These are some wide ass boots. I'm not sure what size these are. The length looks like they would fit me, but the, the width, it looks like it probably a triple E if I had to estimate based on just what I'm seeing. The toe is super duper structured. It's super duper round. I mean, wow. This boot's almost wider than it is long. I mean, <laughs> this is built for a wide foot, no doubt about that. It's a very German looking last, a very Dutch looking last, just by my understanding of, of how different lasts work in, from different regions. Germany is one of the regions that uh, the average foot size is a lot wider, which is why uh, German and UK lasts fit me so well, whereas like the sleeker, the Italian, the Spanish lasts tend to be more narrow because the average foot type in that region is longer, less fleshy, less muscular, you know, more narrow. And so that's why those lasts tend to be a little bit more sleek, whereas this is a type of last that would fit me, no doubt about it. <laughs> this is probably a little too wide, but other than that, I'd probably do a D-width in this brand. But yeah, really good work on stiffening up, not just the heel, but he stiffened up the waist in here, I could tell. Nice waist, even though it is a chunky shoe. We've got a nice elegant curvature inward in the waist, but still not as not as narrow as I as I see other brands doing it. The welting is going to be a 270 degree good year welt. Very well done. So we've got brass eyelets, very nice choice on those. So these eyelets aren't the most robust. Uh, Truman uses thicker ones. They're very good quality. If they were any thinner, they'd be the type that would cinch down, but these actually will resist crimping. So the eyelets are definitely a step up from like what Alden uses, for example. The toe cap, triple stitch down. Again, everything about these boots is just so robust. I'm just so impressed by these. For number 21, Dennis, you have done a knockout job, sir. All right, so let me read a little bit from the maker himself. So I asked him, this is what I love because uh, sometimes when I approach a, make, a maker on Instagram, you know, sometimes I get, you know, a little bit of a story. My whole reason for this channel is to is to give Boots a story. That's what has intrigued me from day one is, is putting life into this stuff via storytelling. Dennis did not disappoint. He came back with a slew of information about his brand, about his passion. One of the things that he values as a maker, as do I as a consumer and as a maker myself, I like that sense of community. I like knowing the people that make my stuff. I like uh, picking their brains. I like uh, talking with them, just becoming friends with them. That you know, People that make stuff are some of the most fascinating people on the planet. And especially people I find that are into leather are some of the most just interesting people. So thank you, Dennis, for being so open and enthusiastic and willing to share your story with me, sir. Um, I hope I don't disappoint you in this video. So custom craft handmade boots. My name is Dennis and I am a one man workshop in custom craft. I come from Kiel in Northern Germany near Denmark. I, I've worked with leather since 2014. I got started with a small motorcycle seat for my son. Now that is the coolest. After that, I made belts, wallets, and stuff like that. Then I came into leather bags and canvas bags, which you can also find on my Instagram page. In 2020, I wanted to buy a pair of Red Wings, but instead I thought about making my own pair. So I spent nearly one year learning boot making before I started to make my own 
boots in 2021. This is my first pair. After that, I was lucky to get some orders for boots so I could continue boot making because it was hard to practice more without orders. So it was difficult for him to get good practice without orders. And so he's grateful that people were putting in orders with him at the time. I could relate to that as a bag maker myself now. Now this pair was my 21st pair. So this pair right here was his 21st. I was so happy Mario asked me to make him some. First, he wanted to go with a leather which wasn't available to me. Near me, there is an old tannery called Cobell. When I went there to pick up leather, I found the leather for Mario's boots and was in love. It's harness leather, veg tanned in a pit with natural ingredients. Mario was also in love with these. He wanted to go with the pattern I made for myself for the Patina Thunderdome. The boot is completely handmade except for the upper, which I sew with a sewing machine. It's a hand welted construction. I made the thread myself from linen strings and waxed it with my own cobbler wax. There is a steel shank inside covered with leather and in the toe area with cork. It's a structured cap toe made from leather. For the insole and midsole, I took five millimeter leather from Martin Tannery from the Black Forest. It was tanned for over two years in a pit with oak bark. We decided to take the same leather for the outsole. Wow. The outstitching was sewn by hand by me. The last for Mario is made to measure from last maker Spenle in Germany. So if you have more questions, please let me know. I'm very honored and excited for your video. Thanks a million for that. And oh yeah, it's all about passion when it comes to boot making for me. I love the craft because there are so many single steps which take all of my concentration and I love the old school way, making the thread by my hands like the boot maker for over 100 years. I'm feeling down to earth when I make boots which makes the world a bit slower for me. And also, I love the conversation with clients, which I learned gets better with time. I appreciate it so much. I'm thankful that people appreciate what I'm doing and I would like to get better with every single pair. That's my goal. And the boot bags are made from natural cotton canvas by me as well. All right, so I asked Dennis how the heck he learned how to build boots like this. And he said, I started watching YouTube videos. Then I got an old German shoemaker book for apprentice and master. This was a game changer for me. And at this time COVID came out and there was a YouTube channel from India where they teach shoemaking during COVID. <laughs> I wrote every single word on my paper and that was also good. Also, you understand what I mean because my English isn't so good. But in fact, I learned the most while making. But the time before making was about a year for theoretical work. And I love that I learned with every single pair that I made. Well, I could really relate to what Dennis is saying by it just makes the world feel slower. And this is why I encourage people to get started with leather craft in general is because like when you're doing it, it's it's so therapeutic. Like it is it is so good. It's it's like meditative. It's you're making something with your bare hands. And so many of us don't get that experience these days in the, in the days of in, in Instagram and social media. And it's, it's all about those quick dopamine hits and, and leather really grounds you, like Dennis said, really brings you down to earth, puts you in touch with your, I think your most basic form of humanity, which is, you know, you need to make stuff with your hands. Prior to this era, people had to do this stuff to survive, you know? How are you gonna make it day to day? A lot of stuff you can't afford, so a lot of stuff you just have to make on your own. It's that sort of industrious uh, instinct that I really love to see come alive when a maker like this does something like this. I'm super impressed. Dennis, for this being your 21st pair, sir, you're an expert already. This leather I am in love with. Again, I've never seen or even heard of the Cobell tannery, but this Geshir leather, Harness leather is super hardy and these oak bark tanned outsoles from the Black Forest in Germany, I believe that's where uh, JR soles were made as well. So it might be a similar operation, if not the same operation. Really impressed with German boot making and their industry and their workmanship. I mean, wow, just look at that. One of the things I really appreciate about these boots in particular is the triple stitching right here, really reinforcing the quarter and the vamp panels together. And I could tell that this was probably hand stitched and this was probably reinforced, probably looks like he went back and forth three or four times and he did that on both sides. And so that's a maker that really believes in setting you up for success with a pair of boots 
it's going to last you a very, very long time and are not going to give out on you. And with that said, I'm probably going to order these same boots from Dennis, <laughs> from Dennis myself. Not that I need another pair, but this is this is special. This is very, very special, these right here, no doubt about it. So let me read a little bit about Cobell Tannery because I just don't know a lot about them. Cobell Leather, Cobell Leather, Leather, our passion since 1877. So the Cobell Leather Tannery started in 1877 by Hubertus Cobell. He returned to Kellinghusen from Quincy in the USA to the place where he had worked years earlier in the Jargstorf Tannery. After Heinrich Jargstorf was elected the first mayor of the city of Kellinghusen, he offered the tannery to Hubertus Cobell. Hubertus didn't hesitate and founded the leather factory Cobell in 1877. At that time, mainly customers from the area and the nearby shoe factories in Barmstedt and Uten were supplied with the sole and Pantene leather. So they do vegetable tan leather, they do tooling leather, they do harness, hot stuffed leather, saddle seat and panel leather, bridle leather. Wow, this goes back to 1794. Johann Heinrich Old set up a tannery which he ran alongside his cobbler shop. In 1817, Klaus Burmester, also a cobbler, bought the tannery and handed it over to his son, Marcus Burmester, in 1851. After his death in 1860, Burmester's widow married Heinrich Jargstorf. Five generations. So it started with Hubertus Cobell, Bernhard Cobell, Hugo Cobell, then Fritz, then Eckhart, then Sebastian. So they do equestrian leather for saddle seats. They do bridal backs, harness leather. They do various grades. So they source raw materials from Scandinavia, Germany, England, and France. These provinces have the properties required of our articles. For example, a particularly fine grain from Scandinavia, a particularly good fullness, England and France, Northern and Southern German raw materials are less fine in grain, but fuller. For the tanning, they select tanning agents according to the requirements of the respective article in order to guarantee a long shelf life. We traditionally tan full leather, such as belt leather in a pit or in a drum. Softer articles exposed to light and sweat are being mostly chrome combination tanned. The greasing process ser serves as the primary protection for grains and fibers. The fat coats the fibers, keeping them flexible and pliable. We mostly use mixture mixtures of natural and synthetic oils and waxes. Large amounts of fat usually create a pull-up effect in which the leather is lightened when it is bent open. For dyeing, they dye in drums. They source their aniline dye stuffs in Germany and Switzerland. The high quality and particularly high binding capacity of these dyes increases the fastness of the finished leather and reduces waste water pollution. Manufacturing in a pit tanned, a fine smooth leather is created from a raw hide within several months. And wow, you know, the more I review boots, the more I realize like eventually I'm gonna have to go traveling and meet these people in real life and just tour all these places. It's just fascinating, you know, these tanneries that I've never heard of that have been within families for generations like like Cobell and uh, are just doing some amazing stuff. I mean, seriously, I'd put this up there with Seidel. I'd put this up there with Law, with Horween. It smells really good. It's got a really good hearty smell about it. it seriously, it just goes to show like not all tanneries are out there in the in the limelight all the time. Sometimes they're hidden away in the dark forests and uh, with a little bit of networking, we can we can find them and, and get the word out because I just, I love hearing about this stuff. And so anyways, Cobell Leder also has a page on Instagram. I will leave a link to both Custom Craft and Cobell in the description below. So give them both a follow. Closing thoughts, I'm just in love with these boots. Thanks so much again to Custom Craft and to Mario for hooking me up with these to review. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching guys. Let's keep the love of boots alive. I'll see y'all in my next video.